enough of that intro music. All right, hey, hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this interesting new tutorial that I'm going to put together today for you. We're going to be installing Minecraft on a Linux server. That's right, yes, Minecraft on a Linux server running Debian, and we're going to be installing Craft Bucket on that server today. All the other tutorials I've seen out there is how do I install on Windows or how do I install on Mac? Well, I use pretty much Linux all the time at work and have been for the last three years. And I have known that the best server to run a Minecraft server on is a Linux server. I've had very little crashes and very little issues running it on a Linux server. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to download Craft Bucket, get it installed, get it up and running so that you can get someone to connect to your server in less than 20 minutes. All right, start the timer, let's do this. All right, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead, I've already logged into my server, as you can see here, I'm using a program called Putty, and Putty allows me to connect to that server through my Windows environment that I have here at work, at home, excuse me. Um, so, now that I'm already logged into my server, you can see that I don't have anything in the directory listed in my home folder. So the first thing I want to do is to make a directory called craft bucket. And now you see I have a folder called craft bucket. We're going to change into that folder by doing a CD craft bucket. And now you can see that I don't have anything in there either. Um, if you're not really familiar with Linux, um, please leave questions and comments below. I may fly through this because I've done this so many times and sometimes I may forget to explain what I'm doing. Although this is a tutorial, so I should be explaining everything to the fullest. So, next, what you'll want to do is download a file called craftbucket.jar from, craft, from bucket.org. So what you'll want to do is pull up a web browser and go to bucket.org. And um, there is a link there that says Craft Bucket Recommended Build. Right click on that link and choose Copy Link Address. Now, come back over here to Putty and type WGET and then left click. That will paste what you have copied in to your clipboard. What this does is this will actually go out to the internet and get this file from the website automatically without having to use an FTP program or anything like that to download it to your local machine and then upload it with FTP. This will do it all for you. It's pretty awesome. Now, after this is done downloading, we want to go ahead and create a file. There it is in there. I did an ls to list the contents of the directory. And you can see craftbucket.jar is listed in here. Oops. And you can see that it's about, what is that, 15 megs? Not too bad. Okay. So, how do we launch this file from a Linux environment? not too bad. Uh, from Windows it's easy, you just double click on the Minecraft EXE file and it does everything for you. In Mac you just double click on the Minecraft DMG file, does everything for you. But here it's not that simple, you can't just double click on it because this of course is a command line environment so there's nothing to double click on. So we have to create a little file, it's a bash file, that will tell us to launch this file using a program called Java. And as you can see, I do have Java installed on the server. It's running 64-bit Java version 1.7. Definitely recommend using this version if you're going to be running Minecraft on your servers. And I also have a server. It's four cores with four gigs of memory on here as well. So therefore, we're going to go ahead and use three gigs of memory for Minecraft. And I'll show you how to do that. First, we're going to go ahead and create a file called craftbucket.sh. We use a program called Vim, V-I-M, or V-I if you don't have Vim installed. You can use V-I, and it's basically like using Notepad on Windows, except a lot better. And in here, we're going to run it, write a little script, okay? And in this little script, it's going to tell us that we want to run a program called craftbucket.jar, okay? Binder, let's see here. You don't have to worry too much about what I'm typing out in the moment. However, you do have to make sure that if you're going to be doing 
following along that make sure that you type exactly what I type. Because if you misspell something, it's not going to work, and then you're going to be asking questions down below in the comment section of what I did wrong in my video because it doesn't work. Well, it does work, and I've tested it hundreds of times installing multiple servers, just so you know. So, if you copy exactly what I do, you shall also get it to work for you. Java. I have modified my script just a little bit to, of course, work with what I have for my machine. And you'll want to make sure you do the same thing for you as well. And in this case, um, I am using 3 gigs for the maximum memory, and I'm using 2 gigs for the minimum memory. All right, now that we've created that little file, what we want to do next is we want to make sure that this file is executable. And to do that, we use a program called chmod. We're going to do plus x craftbucket.sh and hit enter. Now you can see the files turn green in my case on my server. And if I list it all out, you can see that the file is executable there. So now, how do we run this file? Very, very simple. We do uh, period slash craftbucket.sh and hit enter. And that is going to start our server for the first time for the first run. Not bad for seven minutes so far. If you followed along and you've gotten this far within seven minutes, you're doing great. As you can see, the world has is loading for region level 0, it loaded for region level 1, and it loaded for region level 2, and now it is done. It said it took 16 seconds to complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the server. And now you can see there are a lot more files in here. And if you are very familiar with Minecraft, you will know um, a lot of the files that are possibly in here. If you've ever ran a server before, you will know what a lot of these different files are going to do. Banned IPs, of course, is going to be a list of IPs that are banned from your server. Banned players is going to be the list of the players' names. There's going to be the bucket.yml file, which is going to be the, um, the file for bucket to use for different various things. ops.txt is going to be the ops file for players that are opt. There's the permissions file, server properties, whitelist, all this good stuff. And then, of course, you have your worlds and your plugins folder, so don't forget those. The first thing that you want to do, though, is go into the server.properties. So we're going to do server.properties. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have everything set in here that we need. First things first is I like to edit my message of the day, the MOTD. This says a Minecraft server. I'm going to just going to say, welcome to our server okay view distance of 10 which is perfectly fine we're gonna generate some structures we're gonna spawn some monsters we have a max players of 20 which is perfectly fine for uh, 3 gigs of RAM I have 25 gig hard drive so definitely enough there player timeout idle player idle timeout is set to 0 which means somebody can sit at their computer for ever on the server and still have a space. If you set this, for instance, to 20, oops, uh, if you set this to 20, that means if they've been sitting there for 20 minutes, they will get kicked off your server because of a timeout. Okay, so we're going to set that to 20 for right now. We have a game mode of zero, difficulty of one, PvP, of course, is true. Looks like everything else in here is perfect. We don't need to adjust pretty much any other settings that are in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close and exit out of here. And then, of course, we can start our server again by running that command craftbucket.sh, as you can see there. Perfect. Of course, that got done a lot faster because, of course, we've loaded everything into the computer. It has already created all the files it needs. So now that only took 1.5 seconds to load. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, what's next? So if you're going to be running a multiplayer server, 
the, some of the things that you want to do is to get some plugins that's going to stop people from the number one thing that happens on pretty much any other Minecraft server is griefing. So that's one thing that you're going to want to do. We're going to go ahead and um, change into the plugins folder. Okay, there's no plugins currently installed on this server right now. What do we do? Where do we get plugins? So Bucket has an area that you can go to and you can search for plugins. The best thing that you can do is in Google, all you have to do is type in bucket plugins, top five, whatever the case is, and you will get a lot of results indicating the best plugins to use for a server. But what you want to do is you want to do some research on what you need for your service. For me, my five top may not be your five top. So don't send me any hate mail or any hate comments down below saying the sir. The plugins I have suck and they shouldn't be used and you should use these instead. That's fine. That's your opinion. That's great. Here's what I use because it works for me. Okay. I use essentials. My um, bucket essentials is definitely something good to have. It has a lot of great features in it and it definitely helps out a lot. I use grief prevention. One of the best griefing preventing plugins out there hands down. I use Vault, I use World Edit because everybody likes to make their world a little bit better and a little bit faster. And then of course I use DynMap. Of course DynMap is, uh, you have to um, know how to install it with the web properties and everything else, but it gives you a virtual map that you can see your world in and it's perfect. It, it works every time. But the one uh, that we're going to install first is going to be Essentials. So I'm going to head over to the, um, the bucket website and I'm going to download essentials. So here I am. I'm going to do wget and here is the link that I got for the essentials file and just click enter. And that, of course, will download essentials and put it on the server. As you can see, there it is there as a zip file. So one thing that we want to do, we want to unzip it. So unzip essentials, and that will give us all the jar files that we need. And then we can remove essentials.zip. And it's not there anymore. It's perfect. Now what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and go back a directory. And we want to start the server again and let the essentials load for the first time. Very critical. I, I'm a, anytime that you install a plugin, you want to go ahead and make sure that you run that plugin once before you install multiple plugins. Just make sure it works and you don't have any um, uh, complications with running multiple plugins at the same time if it hasn't loaded. So now that that's loaded, we can stop the server, change back into the plugins folder. And as you can see, it created a couple of directories there. So the next one I want to install is grief prevention. So I'm going to go and grab that one here and do the same thing. So this one is for grief prevention and that one's a .jar file in itself. It's not that big of a file. We're going to go back a directory, run craftbucket.sh. Craft That's going to run essentials and it's also going to run grief prevention as well. Okay, now that server is already done so we're going to stop that one again and we're going to go ahead and go back into the plugins folder one more time. I'm going to go ahead and download vault. Let's see, vault here. W get there's this one's for vault. Go back a directory, run the craftbucket.sh. As you can see, you can see them loading every time. Essentials, vault, preparing Grief prevention, vault again, essentials, vault, n no new versions available. It's checking for updates. That's done already, already. So we're going to stop the server one last time. And we're going to go into the plugins folder. And then the last one that we're going to download today is world edit. So we're going to go ahead and copy out where world edit is. 
that's world edit there that's a zip file so you remember what we had to do with the zip file we have to unzip world edit hit enter and that will give us what we need there and then we can remove world edit dot zip go back up a directory and then run the craft bucket one more time now this has loaded all of our plugins into our Minecraft we're done it's been 15 minutes and you have a Minecraft server that anyone can connect to watch I'm gonna go ahead and load up Minecraft here now I'm using 1.6.4 is what it says right here okay and it says ready to play Minecraft 1.6.4 I already have that in here so I'm gonna hit play and now I'm gonna to connect to my server I'm gonna to go to multiplayer I'm gonna go ahead and add server give the server IP address and we're gonna hit enter you can see it down here welcome to the server open that up and you can see here you can see right there that I logged in see that alright now let's show you something else here so you can see I've logged into the server if I try to do something welcome to the server I'm gonna to try to change my game mode it says I don't have access to that access was denied so I can give myself access I'm gonna op and then my username and it says I was opt on the server here and as you can see in the console it says I was opt here as well so now if I wanted to do it oops, I can set my game mode to survival I can set my game mode to creative perfect hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial if you guys have any other questions comments or concerns or anything about setting up a Minecraft server in Linux please let me know put a shout out down below in the questions and comments and I'll try to answer them when I can thanks for watching you guys have a great day